नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टी इज फाइव डे ऑनलाइन ट्रेनिंग एंड दिस इज ऑन वर्चुअल लैब्स द टॉपिक इज वर्चुअल लैब्स फॉर टीचिंग लर्निंग एंड असेसमेंट माई नेम इज तनवी खुराना एंड एट दिस मोमेंट यू वॉचिंग आस ऑन पी एम ई विद चैनल नंबर सिक्स टू चैनल नंबर ट्वेल्व and today is the day 3 of this entire theme well yesterday we discussed virtual labs its types and exemplars the day 1 was all dedicated to virtual labs policy perspectives need and scope well today is the day 3 and the topic of discussion today is exploring virtual labs for sciences well this is a 5 day training and we have a lot to tell you regarding virtual labs if you have not participated in this program till yet then i would request you to please register yourself participate in this program ask as many questions as you want we have an expert with us in our studio here and uh, we have a lot to discuss so please give us a call on our number which is 8800440559 if you want to email us our questions then the email id would be training.helpdesk@ciet.nic dot i n and you're also watching us at this moment on our youtube channel that is n c e r t official in the live chat box you can write down your questions queries and share them with us till 5 o'clock so we have a lot of time in our hands and uh, before introducing our moderator and our guest to all of you let me tell you if you have not registered yourself how can you do that all you have to do is open your browser and type c i e t on that if you'll type it this is the home page you'll get and you can see there are multiple options here so one of the options is events if you'll click on it the third last option is workshop/training please click on it and uh, this would be the next page if you'll scroll it further this is the current activity virtual labs for teaching learning and assessment a 5 day online training if you'll click on it this is all the information regarding this online training see all the schedule is mentioned from day 1 to day 5 and uh, the titles are also mentioned the objectives who all can participate the schedule details are here and this is the way through which you can register yourself scan this qr code or click on this link and fill it up and be a participant and uh, here you can see the most important part is the quiz link which will be given to you on day 5 that is 30th of september at 6 pm that is after the session and if you will participate and uh, watch all the videos that uh, we are here uh, telecasting then you can be a part and uh, you can attempt this quiz if you score 70% and more then you'll get a participation certificate well isn't that great and uh, this is our link through which you can all send your queries any time you want and uh, here is everything regarding this online training i hope you have participated yourself and if you have not then just now you will do that so now let me please introduce to you our moderator for this session and she is miss nidhi adlakha a very warm welcome nidhi So Nidhi is the senior academic consultant from CIT and CRT and uh, now let me just hand over the entire session to her and uh, she'll take it further Nidhi Thank you Tanvi um, so namaskar once again to everyone and we have with us an expert from Amrita Vishwavidya Peetham Ms Reshma Bose welcome to our program ma'am Namaskar and thank you for having me here She has over 10 years of teaching experience and is currently working as a search coordinator in Amrita Create. She is going to give you an overview of experiments available on virtual labs, the purpose of various resources and how they can be used. So Reshma ma'am to start with we would like to know about the vision of developing O labs. Yes. So before I start with I welcome all the viewers to this session. together we are going to explore virtual labs for sciences that is the o labs online labs for school experiments now before i start speaking speaking about our vision let me take you through the a little bit about amrita university so amrita university is one of the few universities where research is compassion driven 
The whole idea of O Labs comes from our vision education for life and education for living. We at Amrita wanted to reach each and every child, even in the rural India, and that is how the whole concept of O Labs came in. Because the right to quality education is the right for every child. Let me walk you through the vision. Our vision is to create world's largest platform for lab experiments for schools and create animations, interactive simulations and labs that will allow children to explore and learn. Now as visible on the screen, you can see that we have already deployed in 26 states of India and we have over 52 lakh viewers. Also, we are deployed in 80,000 plus schools and have trained 54,000 teachers. So that is the impact that OLAB has created till now. That's great, ma'am. So currently, how many experiments are available and for which subjects? So this is the landing page of OLABs, as you see here. We have over 215 experiments for cl from classes 9 to 12 and also we are, have started for classes 6 upwards too. So as of now, since we are looking into the science experiments, as of now we have 54 physics experiments, 46 chemistry experiments and 36 biology experiments and for 6 upwards it is 13 science experiments. And let me tell you one thing, all the experiments are aligned with NCRT syllabus and follows the key principles of NEP 2020. That means diverse resources are available for all the users, whether students or teachers. So the question arises, how are virtual labs advantageous to the users? What all resources are available for making learning an engaging process? Yeah. So, what is the importance of virtual labs? Why is it uh, in such a big magnitude? Because we give free access to the multilingual lab. So, it is available in multiple languages and the interactive sessions can, can be used by children to explore, conduct and repeat the experiments anytime, anywhere. So whether they are in school, whether they are in their house, even they can always practice. So the specialty of our lab is that we provide a complete lab learning experience. And by that, what I mean is that what you see on the screen. So this is how the OLABS page looks like. Now, each experiment has different sections that are covered, as you can see here on the screen, the theory, procedure, animation and video, simulation, viva, resources and feedback. So the theory gives the objective, the concept, cost, concept related uh, to experiments and expected learning outcomes. So detail, it is explained in details and I'm sure that no other labs would provide this much content. Then Procedure also explains how to perform the labs in the real labs as well as in the simulator. So once the children are thorough with the theory, they can check on the procedure to know how to perform the experiments. Now animation video and animation and video are for the teachers as well as the students. So teachers can use it as a pre-lab session or post-lab session to show the children so that they get a clear understanding of the concept and students also can they can use this to learn the concept thoroughly now simulation that is the most exciting part of all labs and uh, it helps the learner to practice the lab experiments and the simulations are accurate as well as the simulations can help you do the thing that experiments that you cannot actually do in real lab. I'll show you an example here. So what you see on screen is a simple pendulum experiment. So here you see the affordances on screen. So children 
can select from the affordances. For example, select the environment. You cannot go to a moon. You can't think of going to a moon or Uranus or Saturn or Jupiter to conduct this experiment. But we are providing you with this opportunity. Same way, they can select the shape from sphere, clock pendulums, rectangle. Also, they can select the materials, steel, copper, aluminium. So we provide them with a variety of options through simulation. Now, when it comes to VIVA, a set of questions are given, multiple choice questions that students can answer to check how much they have understood the concept after going through the theory, the procedure, watching the animation, videos and doing the simulation. So it is a complete package wherein the children understand and learn the concepts thoroughly. And of course resources, if the child wants to get more knowledge or wants to go in depth into a particular topic, they can always check on resources. Now feedback is another important Thing. Uh, in day one session, Indu ma'am has also stressed on it because it helps in continuous and constant improvement of labs. So this is how it becomes a complete lab. That's amazing. Earlier we never had such an opportunity to understand concepts using such a variety of resources. So now you will not only understand but experience concepts. So, Reshma ma'am, I would like to ask you on which platforms can we find all these resources? Here on screen, you can see the three different platforms we have made our labs available. So, as diverse the labs is, so is the availability too. So, O labs is available in olabs, www.olabs.edu.in. It's also available in Diksha Vertical. So these two platforms give you a complete lab experience. So you can, from theory to the simulation, videos, animation, everything is just a click away. We also have provided YouTube videos in our Amrita Create channel, wherein you can, if you don't know a concept, you can go through to the YouTube video and quickly check on the concept that you want to learn. So it is diverse and as you can see here uh, O Labs is being launched as a part of new educational initiative and was made available in Diksha on 29 July 2022. So that means not only resources are diverse but the media to reach these resources are also diverse. So mm -hmm. Reshma ma'am uh, if it would be great if you throw light on how teachers and students can make use of these virtual labs. That is one of the most important parts when it comes to O labs, usage. So teachers can use it as a supplementary material. We will be displaying soon how the teachers can make use of it in diverse ways. But our teachers are a lot more creative. They can come up with new ideas and we are always open to it. So they can send us their feedback on how they used the OLABs in their classrooms. So as a supplementary material, before taking the children to lab, they can, as you saw, the diverse tabs we have provided from theory, procedure, videos, animation, simulations, they can be made to do in the class before the children go to the lab and they get an idea of what they are going to perform in the lab. Even after, after they go to the lab to, to know the understanding of the concept OLAMs can be used. The VIVA questions are available. Teachers can make them do in the class. They can practice. They, have, they can have a fun interactive session in the class. So it can be a group participation as individual and individual participation. So this makes the class interactive and the children will develop a liking for the subject science and that is what we need. Students too can use OLABs before they go to the lab. They can quickly go through to the OLAB simulation because we have provided with help tab and it is very easy for you to use. You just click on help and all the help is provided to you. So just go to the simulations, do the uh, lab simulations and then you are ready and you are going to outshine others when you go to the lab. So 
that is one positive about for the students then they can use the videos uh, to watch watch the videos and get in depth knowledge of the content and videos are very uh, interactive colorful and very useful for them to learn the concept So this shows that virtual labs are a boon for all the users. Reshma ma'am, could you please demonstrate simulations of certain concepts so as to make it easy for the users to practice experiments on their own? Yes, sure. Please uh, give me some time to share the uh, share the screen. Sure, ma'am. Now on screen you see the landing page of O Labs, and on top, as you can see, uh, it is a Digital India initiative of uh, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, and Amrita and Sidak are together uh, taking this venture forward. And here we have different tabs: the home tab, about, in news, workshop, and so on. So you can log in. To the O Labs to do the simulations. Now the account creation is really simple. It is as you do for any social media uh, account. So you can go that go and do that. Otherwise, if the children want, if the teachers want the students to be registered in batch, you may go to the registration tab, click on students. And there you will be direct to click here to know how to register. From there you can go to scroll down and go to the download Excel file where from where you can download the Excel file and uh, fill in the details of the students and send or email it to us on support at olabs.co.in. Now let's take a view of the landing page of Olabs once again. Clicking on the home page, here you see the screen and various subjects, physics, chemistry, biology, maths, English. So, so what, since we are concentrating only on the science subjects, let's start with physics first. So I hope everyone is ready. So we'll start with conversion of galvanometer. To voltmeter for class 12. So I'll just show you how the labs are being displayed class-wise. So different labs as you can see now on screen you see class 11. If we, uh, we scroll down you'll see other classes. So now let's uh, move on to the conversion of galvanometer to voltmeter. Now here I explained to you in the PPT the different uh, tabs that we have provided for the viewers to get a complete lab experience. So this is what I meant. Now here you see the theory, procedure, animation, simulator, viva voce, resources and feedback tab. Now when we click on the theory tab, we get the objective, the theory in that, since this experiment is about conversion of galvanometer to voltmeter, they have defined it Voltmeter is defined, converting galvanometer to voltmeter is explained with figures and relations. So this is quite vast. And the most important section that is the learning outcome where the student learns the following concepts, galvanometer, voltmeter and how a galvanometer can be converted into a voltmeter. Now let's move on to the next tab. The procedure tab and in the procedure tab what did we explain we have explained the materials required for performing each lab the circuit diagram is clearly shown for children to understand then the real lab procedure when they go to the real lab how are they going to perform step-by-step -step procedure is given in simple language for children to read and understand as well as the uh, simulator procedure. 
that they are going to perform very soon. Now observations and calculations are given, then tables are given, results and of course precautions which is very important when it comes to the real lab. It is clearly explained. Now let's move on to the next tab. The animation tab, the most interesting part. Now, let's hear what is being explained in the animation tab. So, all full procedure is explained in the animation tab. Let's view the animation. Conversion of galvanometer to voltmeter. Aim to convert the given galvanometer of known resistance and figure of merit into a voltmeter of desired range, say 0 to 3 volt, and to verify the same. Materials required a galvanometer of known resistance and figure of merit, a battery eliminator, one way key, a rheostat. A voltmeter of 3 volt range, connecting wires, a resistance box, sandpaper. Procedure Take a galvanometer with known value of resistance G and figure of merit K. Note the total number of divisions N on either side of the zero of galvanometer. Calculate IG, the current required to produce full-scale deflection in the galvanometer from the formula Ig is equal to Nk. Calculate the value of the series resistance R to be connected in series with galvanometer for the desired range V using the relation R is equal to V upon Ig minus G. You can take V as 3 volts. Connect the high resistance box in series with the galvanometer and take out the plugs of calculated resistance R. Tighten rest of the plugs in the resistance box. The galvanometer can now be used as a voltmeter of range V volts. Calculate the least count of the converted voltmeter as the ratio of desired range of voltmeter to the number of divisions on galvanometer. Here, least count is equal to 0.1 volt per division. For verification, arrange the apparatus as in the circuit diagram. Clean the ends of the connecting wire using a sandpaper to remove the insulating layer if any. Using the connecting wires, connect the positive terminal of the battery eliminator to the lower fixed terminal of the rheostat. Connect the positive terminal of the voltmeter to the same lower end of the rheostat. From this terminal of rheostat, make another connection to the positive terminal of converted galvanometer. The negative terminal of the galvanometer is connected to one of the terminal of the high resistance box. Connect the other terminal of the resistance box to the upper or variable terminal of the rheostat. Connect the negative terminal of voltmeter also to the same terminal of rheostat. Make another connection from the lower terminal of rheostat to one terminal of the one-way key. Connect the other end of one-way key to the negative terminal of the battery eliminator. Notice that the voltmeter and the converted galvanometer are connected parallel to each other. Hence, voltage across them will be same. Now, make sure you have taken out the plugs of calculated resistance R from the resistance box connected in series to the galvanometer. Ensure that the connections are tight and insert the key. Adjust the movable contact of the rheostat so that the deflection in the galvanometer becomes maximum. 
The rheostat here will act as a potential divider. Note the readings of the galvanometer and voltmeter. Convert the galvanometer reading to volts using the relation V1 is equal to number of divisions in galvanometer N multiplied by least count of the converted voltmeter. Calculate the difference between the readings of voltmeter and galvanometer as the error. Move the rheostat slider and take few more observations covering the whole range of voltmeter that is 0 to 3 volts. Record your observations. Results The conversion is verified as the error or difference in actual and measured value of potential difference is very small. Now, you must have noticed in animation, students can easily link the circuit diagram with the actual connection as it is highlighted and shown. Such minute detailing is focused in OLAB experiments. And that is why I said it is a complete lab exp experience. Now, let's move on to simulator, the most exciting part. Now, the simulator is designed with maximum resemblance to a real lab. The student will have to calculate the resistance value first before proceeding with the rest of the experiment. Now, we have already calculated the resistance value here, which is uh, 4920 ohms. Now, you must have noticed that the submit button was inactive before, but as soon as we enter the value, the submit button got activated and you can see a tick mark which shows that the value entered by you is correct. Now let's move on to the next section. Now here on screen you see the white box in the top left corner shows the circuit when clicked. Isn't the circuit visible? Now the connection can be made by referring to the circuit diagram provided. The correct position to connect the wire is also highlighted in black as visible here. Let's check. You can see it is highlighted in, it's getting highlighted in black as we are making the connections. So let's slowly make the connections. You can once more, uh, if you want, you may once more click on the white box, as I mentioned, to check whether the connections made are correct. Now, select the resistance value, determine and enter earlier. This will enable the insert key option. Here, the insert key option is enabled. The student can now slide the slider of the rheostat and record the readings of the converted voltmeter and the standard voltmeter in the tabular column that is provided below. For that, you can click the plus button and then enter, a, enter the value. Here I have entered 30, 3 and 3. Now okay. So the error in the tabular column may be displayed automatically as you can, as visible to you. Now moving on to the next tab, which is the Viva tab. For the students to analyze their knowledge, this tab is very useful for teachers. You can constantly use in class uh, to check the understanding of the concept. Now let's quickly do a few questions to give you an understanding of how it works. First question, the current required for deflection in galvanometer is? Second question, the resistance of ideal voltmeter, ideal voltmeter and ammeter respectively are? The galvanometer is converted to voltmeter by? Now, 
the factor that does not affect the sensitivity of the galvanometer is okay now uh, let's go to the uh, submit button and see what happens when you don't enter or when you enter a wrong answer let's check that click on the submit button and see these are the results if you have entered the right answer you get a green tick but if you have entered the wrong answer what do you get you get a red cross that means the answer is wrong but you need not worry you can always try it again so repeat and learn that is the speciality of colabs you can always go back to animation watch the video do the simulators and then come back and do the answer the questions now moving on to resources we have provided you with multiple resources to learn more on the topic as you can see here and now the feedback tab which is very important for us user pers knowing the user perspective is very important to constantly keep on improving so please do give your feedback once you have uh, used the online labs now you know the labs they provide you with uh, an experience that a real life lab cannot provide you that is children can always redo the experiments they have the freedom to make mistakes better understanding of the concepts so let's quickly go to another lab experiment which will excite the children very much and it is presented to you in a gamified form a 3d animation and simulation is provided to you so simple pendulum for class 9 as explained earlier the objective the theory is explained with the picture the relations are explained clearly as you can see here and the learning outcome laws of simple pendulum everything is explained in simple language for you to show it in the class and for the child to learn it at home too let's move on to the next tab that is the procedure tab so in the procedure tab as you see the real lab experiments are shown step by step with the pictures as well as the observations and calculations the results everything is shown in the procedure tab now moving on to the animation tab let's quickly scroll through the animation because we are providing you with a 3d animation video so we'll quickly go through that least count the least this of our bob is 1.5 cm l plus h should be 98.5 cm measure this distance from the bob and mark it on the thread pass the free end of the thread through a split cork such that the 100 cm marking is just at the bottom of the cork clamp the cork firmly to a heavy iron stand placed on a horizontal table make sure that the pendulum bob can move freely fix a large size protractor just below the split cork ensure that the 0 degree to 180 degree line of the protractor is horizontal and the pendulum hanging vertically in its rest position coincides with the 90 degree line of the protractor draw two perpendicular lines on a sheet of paper or the surface mark it ab and mn let them intersect at the point o divide lines of the a1 to hold the pendulum bob just above the point o displace the bob to the first division point o a1 on line ab keeping the thread stretched check the angular displacement of the bob on the protractor attached at the top of the pendulum release the bob so that it begins to oscillate about its mean position o with amplitude o a1 make sure the 
Now due to the time constraint, we won't be able to show you the full video. Now let's move on to the simulator part, which is very exciting. As, as I told you, we have tried to provide you with a completely gamified experience. Let's begin. Now, as you can see here, um, keyboard controls are given W, S, A, D, uh, for, for forward, backward, left and right movement, an arrow up, down, arrow left and arrow right. The blue circle indicates that is the simulator area. So let's move towards the blue circle. Observe that protractor is attached at the top of the simple pendulum to record the angular displacement of the pendulum. Same was shown in the animation too. Entering the region, we can see the control panels available and instructions on using the controls. Now stopwatch is provided wherein you can start using Z, pause using X and reset using C. Then Q, but Q button is provided to stop the pendulum from swinging. So let's start. Now the pendulum is at rest in mean position O. Drag the pendulum to any point marked between A1 to A6. That is our amplitude of oscillation. Press Z on the keyboard to start the stopwatch when the bob crosses the mean position O. Press X to stop the stopwatch when the pendulum completes 10 oscillations. Now once done, the children may note down the reading. So, uh, we have already paused pressing X. Now you can reset using the C button. And before that, you need to stop the pendulum, sorry, Bob, by pressing Q. So this is the way you do the experiments. You can repeat it and do and record your uh, record, uh, record recordings and then you may carry out with the new, you may record the readings and you may carry out with the next set of experiments. Now restart the simulator by pressing R. Now students can analyze their knowledge by attempting the viva questions. The resource section has materials for further reading. So this is the complete tab here. For the simple pendulum, amplitude and time period for class 9. Now, this was physics, these uh, experiments. Now, we will move on to the next set of experiments that are in biology. So, the first experiment selected is class 9, detection of starch in food samples. So the tabs are similar to what you saw in the physics, theory, procedure, animation, simulator, video, viva, resources and feedback. Now in the theory, the objective is explained. Now what is the objective? Our objective is to test for the presence of starch in each food sample. The theory, definitions and classification of carbohydrates and what starch are is being explained. The learning outcome would be getting a complete understanding of carbohydrates, their classification and starch by observing the animation and getting hands-on experience through simulation. So here, as it is visible, we have provided you with colorful pictures to get a better understanding. Now, moving on to the procedure tab. The materials required are given with images, so what it makes uh, it easy for the teacher to explain in the class and when they go to the lab, when they take the children to the lab setting, it becomes easier for chi a child or a learner to identify the equipment. Now, same as in other labs, the actual lab procedure as well as the simulator procedure is explained. Now, what is the observation? Here, 
the student the, the students should observe that the test solution turns blue black and color now let's see the okay one more important thing before i move on to the animation tab the precautions which is very important when it comes to physical labs so when children read this they know when they go to a physical lab how do they behave and what are the precautions that they take now moving on to the animation tab let's uh, quickly play the video for you to get an understanding samples wire distilled putty tile muslin cloth using a spatula put these pieces of test material that is the add some distilled water to the beaker the mixture for 5 minutes while stirring with a glass rod now take a beaker and the muslin cloth tie a thread around the mouth of the beaker to secure the muslin cloth to it take iodine solution using a dropper in a blue black color shows the presence of starch So we drop the iron solution to it. So it hasn't changed the color. So in the results tab, the presence of starch, whether the starch is present or not, uh, you have to click the button. So if the answer is correct, you get a tick mark, and if the answer is wrong, you get a cross mark. Let's move on and do with the. other food items so for beet the color has changed now let's see what happens when we answer something wrong yeah so there is a cross mark when we answer it wrong but you need not worry you can always redo and make the correction so this helps in learning even if you go wrong okay moving on to the next tab that is the video so in the video tab we have tried to provide you with a real lab experience food is the main source of chemical nutrients for living things such as carbohydrates fats and proteins starches not starch is a polysaccharide carbohydrate to pectin which in turns blue black it indicates the gets the presence of starch in the solution our aim here is to test the presence of starch in a given food sample materials required and a tie place a put containing the mixture over a hot plate heat the mixture for 5 minutes while stirring with a glass rod now take a beaker secure the muslin solution through this beaker in the test tube take iodine solution using a dropper add a couple of drops of iodine reagent to the test solution indication of blue black color shows the presence of starch in the solution precaution Use iodine solution carefully as it is toxic if swallowed or inhaled. 
Now, uh, by watching the video, you got an idea of how to do the experiment. Because of the time constraint, we are not able to show you the full video, but do watch it uh, in Diksha, through Diksha platform or through our labs or through our Amrita Create video channel, YouTube channel. So you got an idea of what happens uh, when the experiment is done and also the precaution is explained in the video. So children get an idea of how to do it and also the precaution that they need to maintain. Now moving on to the next tab that is the VIVA wherein uh, self-assessment can be done by the students answering the questions. Let's quickly answer the questions and submit. So the first answer is correct, the second answer is correct, fourth answer is wrong. So what are you going to do? You are going to redo it. So we provide you with an opportunity to learn and redo the uh, experiments as well as you can uh, do the simulations again and again, anytime, anywhere. Now the resources, we have provided you with resources uh, to do in-depth study on the topic, to refer and of course we have the feedback form for your valuable feedback. Now next we will check another uh, experiment that is the study of osmosis for class 11. Sure uh, ma'am we have got last five minutes left. Okay fine I'll uh, just go through fast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is a very as you can see there is an extra tab here uh, which is important vocabulary words. I'll explain to you later. So let's move uh, quickly go through the uh, tabs. So in the theory, as I explained earlier, the objective, the theory and its importance with the picture of the phenomenon of osmosis and the learning outcomes is explained. The procedure, same as all with the pictures, we have explained whole procedure including conclusion and precautions. Now let's Move on to the animation. Uh, animation as you have watched earlier, details are given of the procedure, how to do the experiment, uh, materials required and so on. Now the best part is the simulator part. Let's do with the simulations. So here to increase and decrease the concentration of sugar in a petri dish, select the sugar concentration from the affordances. Here I have selected 10. And now select the sugar concentration in potato. Here I have selected the 25. Now click on the cross-sectional view. Now take the first pin and place it at the initial level of water in the potato. Now you can see the start button has got activated and the timer which is set for 2 hours is automatically set. So what happens is this experiment will help you if there is a time constraint. Now second, place the second pin in the final level of water in the potato. Now you got an I button, click on that, that is the inference, that is osmosis occurs here. It is the movement of the solvent to a region of lower concentration through the semi-permeable membrane. So this is the uh, simulator part. Now, if you want to redo it by changing the concentration levels, you may always do that. Now, moving on to the next tab, uh, which is the video. Uh, the uh, lab uh, experiments are shown as to be done in the real lab. Then the viva voce that we have already explained. Now, the new tab that we have here, that is, Important vocabulary words to know for this experiment. This is very useful for the teachers. The teachers can play this in their classroom and it gives an idea to the children on the different words they have. Note the root words which will help you to understand these words and to learn new words fast. So this is an extra tab that we have provided for this experiment. We have the resources tab. All the materials are provided here. 
you can always go in and refer and also your feedback which is very valuable for us so these were the experiments i hope uh, you will definitely try all these experiments out it is available in three platforms the o labs the diksha as well as in amrita youtube videos thank you so much for your time going to explore all the experiments uh, that you just showed and uh, also you said that there are three multiple websites uh, on which they are all available so thank you so much ma'am for your valuable input for being with us in this particular program and uh, for telling us everything about uh, o labs and uh, all the experiments that you just showed uh, regarding the science subjects thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you and thank you to nidhi as well for being a part of our program thank you ma'am thank you so much thank you to all the viewers for uh, being a participant in our program well we saw a lot of compliments that you just gave us our expert through this program and um, we have received multiple responses thank you so much to all of you but before leaving let me just tell you the process once again if you have not registered yourself please register yourself uh, all you have to do is open the browser and type ciet on it once you open uh, our website the home page will be open and uh, that would be i'll just show it to you and uh, once you open that you can see our home page here it is and uh, once you open the home page this would be the screen and uh, under events just click on the third last button which would be workshop slash training once you click on it and uh, scroll it down that would be the current activity which is going on the theme is virtual labs for teaching learning and assessment if you click on it this would be the page you'll go to and uh, all the details are mentioned here you can see the titles of all five days today is the day three where we are discussing exploring virtual labs for science and this is how you can participate scan this qr code or click on this link and be a participant the most important thing is the quiz link which will be updated here on 30th of september at six o'clock right after our live telecast and uh, this is the pledge please explore it and uh, do come back tomorrow again and uh, tomorrow we'll be discussing exploring virtual labs for mathematics i really hope that you found this entire program really helpful and you'll be exploring all those experiments which ma'am just showed thank you so much once again for being a part tomorrow we'll come back again and uh, at the same time that would be 4 o'clock and on the same platform which is ncrt official see you tomorrow and uh, don't go anywhere for now we're coming back with another special program of ours that is sayog and the topic of discussion would be dealing with sadness keep your questions ready thank you once again namaskar <laughs>